For too many Americans, the truth is that getting a college degree has simply become a toll, an ever more expensive two, four, or six year pit stop that is increasingly mandated by employers' HR departments. Today, thousands of employers use college degrees as a quick and easy shortcut when it comes to screening and hiring job applicants, even when the degrees have no connection to the job at hand. Nearly two thirds of employers admitted to having rejected applicants with the required skills and experience simply because they didn't have a college degree. The 2014 survey found that employers are requiring bachelor's degrees for positions whose current workers weren't required to have one and where the job's required skill sets haven't changed. Somehow, college degree requirements have become commonplace. But while colleges and universities benefit the most from degree inflation, they're not the root cause. So where did it all start? Let's turn back the clock. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited employers from discriminating against job applicants on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It did, however, allow employers to use professionally developed hiring tests as long as they weren't designed, intended, or used to discriminate. The Supreme Court unanimously interpreted this to mean that when a hiring process disproportionately affects minority groups or has a disparate impact, then employers must show that any requirements are directly related to the job itself. This disparate impact standard, which Congress made federal law, applies to all criteria used in hiring employees, including educational requirements. Crucially, however, this standard has only really been applied to other non-educational employment tests. In turn, risk-averse employers have become increasingly reliant on college degree requirements as a quick and easy way to screen applicants while avoiding the legal pitfalls that accompany other employment tests. For employers, the logic is simple. A college degree is an easy to read signal that an applicant has the ability to turn and work, sit still for long periods, take direction, and has the baseline verbal and written skills required for most jobs. What's ironic about this is that indiscriminate degree requirements carry obvious discriminatory implications as they disproportionately harm groups with low college graduation rates. The high cost of credential inflation, of course, falls most heavily on low income and working class individuals. Degree inflation also bars young people from taking entry level jobs and holds families and would-be workers hostage, forcing them to spend time and money getting a degree that may not deliver relevant skills or knowledge. What can be done? Policymakers, employers, and colleges should forge alternative paths to a degree for those who lack the money, time, or interest to do so within the strictures of the current system. Policymakers also need to consider how to put college degrees on equal footing with other hiring qualifications, and there should be new ways to certify the skills that employers demand and ensure that degrees are only required for jobs that clearly demonstrate the need for them. While these goals could be reached by amending legislation that regulates employment tests or by increasing support for college alternatives like apprenticeships and non-degree programs, advocacy and legal action are likely required to spark the necessary change. College degrees can be useful tools, but they shouldn't serve as a gateway to every career path. As it stands, college degree requirements are turning higher education into an ever more expensive burden and not the bridge to opportunity it was meant to be. To learn more about the college industrial complex, check out the link to my national affairs essay in the description below. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like AEI scholars to cover on Rethink Tank. And be sure to subscribe for more videos and research from AEI.